Welcome everyone to Devotion to Promotion, our long-term Let's Play with Football Manager 2020. Now, if you've stumbled onto this channel and you're like, what the heck is Football Manager? Football Manager is a sports management simulation game, which allows you basically to take over any one of hundreds of teams around the world in football, or if you're from the United States, soccer. You can start at the top, you can start at the bottom, and you can manage your way, your victories, defeats, championships, relegations to lower leagues, promotions to bigger leagues, you're buying players, selling players, and it is one of the most just kind of complex and intricate simulations in the market today. Pretty much, if you think about a sports managed sim simulation, people point to this one as saying, wow, this one has everything in it. Um, it's a fantastic game for telling stories. So one of the things that I like about it is that the story that your, your avatar, your manager has in the game is often interesting with ups and downs and highs and lows and who knows where it can go. And there's thousands of different ways to play the game. And so this series will be the adventures of Zilla Blitz, a manager in this world. We'll see whether he goes up or down, becomes famous, or just struggles with mediocrity. And so without any delay, let's dig in and get started. In this segment, we're going to look at the backdrop for the, the long-term series. So this is a lot of the background information. We're going to talk a little bit about our house rules, talk about kind of what we're going to try to do with our career, the objectives of it, how we're going to play the game. I'll show a little bit about what leagues I have active, and I'll also put down in the links below all the different add-ons that I've put in to get the logos. So in case you want to copy the same look, you have all that information there. Lastly, we'll finish up at the end of the episode. I've jumped in and I've played about uh, a week or two, and we have three job offers. So the biggest job offer, I started the game as an unemployed manager with no badges, so no licenses, um, only Sunday League football as you, experience, as you can see up on the right. This is our basically our profile page behind us. All of our attributes, except for, I think we have six points to scatter around, put a couple of points in adaptability. So if I have to move to a different country, that might help a little bit. And then working with youngsters, because we'll be going to be starting at the bottom of the football world in this career. But this is a lot of the background information. If you want to skip this, um, go to the end and you'll be able to see the job offers we've gotten. And the big decision is, where do we start? Which club do we pick? And if you've got ideas on that or something you want to mention, say, oh yeah, pick this one because please feel free to drop a comment and, and let us know. But let's get started. Uh, the biggest question probably say is, okay, how am I going to play the game? What's going to be the goal? Well, the number one goal of this game is going to be fun. I want it to tell, I want to, I want to just experience this career, have a good time, see what kind of adventures come up, see what kind of cool things happen, and just enjoy it. Having said that, there's a lot of ways to play the game. You can start at the bottom of the world, at the top of the world, or wherever. We're going to start at the bottom. So again, I've made myself unemployed, no badges, no experience. We're going to start at the very bottom, and we're going to start with what's called the Diffuse Challenge. And the Diffuse Challenge basically says start the game, sim ahead to the end of the first season, and then get a job with one of the newly promoted teams to the Vanarama North or South League in England. So the bottom leagues in England, level six. And then stick with that team and take them all the way to the Premier League, win the Premier League, and then win Champions League. So that's our number one challenge, the first thing we're going to try to do. Now, I'm not very good at the game. So the chances of that happening, I would put are like 100 to 1 because it's pretty easy to get fired. And especially early on, it's pretty easy to get fired quickly. So if that happens and I get fired real quickly, I might restart by grabbing another newly promoted team and trying to win the, the challenge with that team. But I also might just shift sideways. In the game world, we can activate a lot of different countries. And in this game, we've activated all of the countries in the British Isles. So we'll take a look at that in a minute. We're basically, Ireland, Northern Ireland, Wales, Scotland, and England. And there's another challenge, which is called the British and Irish Steel Challenge, which says, how many can you win all 50 of the cups and trophies and leagues that are available to managers in those five countries? So if you know we get five or six years into the Diffuse Challenge, and then I get fired, instead of maybe dropping all the way back down to the beginning and starting over, I might slide sideways and check out Wales or Ireland or Northern Ireland or Scotland and pick up a team there and see if I can win some trophies or cup there and see how far along I can get in that British and Irish Steel Challenge. Now, again, the chances of, of winning all 50 of those trophies and cups are probably one in 100, but it would be kind of fun to see how long you could get. Having said both of that, to kind of working for both of those challenges, 
the other element of this is that I really want to have fun. So if we're in the diffuse challenge and something happens where it just looks like we have to kind of grind away for a couple of years, you know, maybe we don't have enough money or something like that or can't get the right type of stadium or got a bad owner. And it looks like it's just going to be kind of this slog for like two or three years to fix whatever big structural problem exists within the team. Then I might just bail and just do a journeyman save and a journeyman save basically just jumping around the British Isles, picking up some teams, having fun and just enjoying the career. And to that end, I've also activated the top two leagues in the five major countries. So England, of course, Spain, Italy, Germany, Germany and France um, have their top two leagues after active. So if we wanted to slide sideways after a while, I could probably pick up a job there and see what that's like managing in Germany. Maybe that'd be fun. I don't know. But um, if you have ideas for something too, let me know. I've also activated the uh, U.S. MLS. So uh, being from the United States, I thought it might be fun to maybe slide over there and pick up you know, a couple teams there and see what kind of things I could do with a U.S. team there. So that's the overall goal. Uh, the second thing I'd like to talk a little bit about are our house rules. So everybody likes to play the game in a different way. And there's a lot of different ways you can play the game that make it either easier or harder. And so I thought I'd talk a little bit about these rules that I've got in place because I'm not really interested in just kind of climbing up the ladder and, and winning everything the first, you know, with like five years or something like that. I'm really more interested in like enjoying the ups and the downs and all the kinds of things that can happen in a career. So I'm not looking to make it easy and be, prove to anybody I'm great because I'm not, for one thing. So I do have some house rules that I thought I would share. Uh, one of the first ones is, if you go out on the internet, you can easily see articles and uh, videos about like the best wonder kids, like these hidden players in leagues and stuff like that. And then you can kind of easily go grab those players and bring them into your team. And I'm not looking at those videos. I don't read those articles. I don't want to see them. I'm absolutely zero interest in having someone find someone for us that I can then go out and grab and just bring into the team. And all of a sudden, our team is wonderful. Likewise, there's a lot of ways you can download tactical formations and stuff like that into the game. Um, I, I'm not going to do that either. Either. I'm not looking at like installing some killer tactic that somebody else came up with and put it into the game so that the game becomes really easy. Um, I'm not going to edit the database. That goes without saying. I've clicked that button that prevents editing the database, so I can't edit the database in here. And uh, no saves coming. That's another one. So I'm not going to, you know, you, something you could have a big game, you lose the game, you go back to a previous save, and then you play it, and you win the game, and you move on. Not interested in that at all. Whatever happens, happens. And if you followed the pilot series that I did with FM19, you saw that we had a lot of big failures. Where it would have been really helpful to win the match, but we didn't, and kind of our whole career pivoted on that loss. Um, so whatever happens, happens. If we get relegated four times in a row, we get relegated four times in a row. If I spend my whole career down here at the bottom of English soccer, so be it. Um, I don't really care. Just kind of interested in, in uh, playing things as the way they happen. Attribute masking is on. That kind of goes in line with the scouting. So the, by default, attribute masking is on in the game, which means that if you look at a player you haven't scouted, you really don't have much of an idea what their attributes and skills and stuff are. Um, you can ch check a box that says that turns that off, in which case you almost have perfect knowledge of the, of the football world. And I'm not interested in that. So attribute masking by default is on and it will stay on. So that makes it a lot harder because you don't know what kind of players you're going to get. You don't know, you make a lot more mistakes with money because the player looks good, especially down at the lower levels. You're when your coach, coaches are really bad and they say, this guy's great. And then you bring them in and oh my God, they're just terrible. So, um, but that's more fun. It's kind of, it's kind of more uh, human in terms of weighing let play the game. I'm also not interested in any kind of tricks or manipulations to make the game easier. So I saw an article, uh, I think it was a YouTube video, where a guy set up a league before the season at the bottom of English soccer and then invited in like Manchester City and Manchester United and had them all play in the league. And all of a sudden he had $5 million with his team to start the league. And that's that's crazy down at the lower levels. It doesn't happen. So that would be an unrealistic trick to kind of make more money. I'm not going to do those uh, do those at all either. And uh, that's about it, I think. So those are kind of the, the, the rules, the kind of the house rules and things like that. And uh, I think it's pretty much time. I'll take a quick look here and show you the settings for the leagues that I've got in. So here are our league settings so far. You'll see I've got all six of the English leagues, all four of the Scottish leagues. Uh, the top two leagues from France, Spain, Germany, and Italy over here, as well as the two available leagues from the Republic of Ireland, 
two from Wales and Wales this uh, the new the bottom one here in Wales is new this year to be included in the base game and then the three uh, top leagues from Northern Ireland so uh, all of these British Isle leagues are in and then plus the two big ones there and then the uh, MLS is on view only so I can add them back in as a playable nation uh, when we get going a little bit more and we can always add more into if something should happen but I think that's uh, that's about it in terms of the background information I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I want to say but I think we should really just kind of dig in now and take a look at our job offers so we have uh, three job offers from Vanarama North and South teams the first one that just came in this morning is from Nuneaton Borough now they're offering 800 pounds per week so this big decision is in the different factors a 12k transfer budget their wage budget is 9.25k per week. And the expectations here are just to fight bravely against relegation. So £9,000 a week is a pretty good amount of money down at this level, which makes it really, really tempting. And the expectations, basically, we don't even have to avoid relegation. Although if we do get relegated, we're fired because there's no league below this. But just to fight bravely against relegation. So that might be a nice, kind of an easier cruising one here to take a look at. Uh, in terms of starting out with money. So that would be option number one. If we take a look at their their team here, we see that they it looks like they have about 130,000 pounds in the bank. So that's pretty good. And of their wage budget, they're currently using about half of it. So we'd have about four and a half thousand pounds available to use for that. That's pretty good. Uh, the facilities here, the stadium as uh, Liberty Way built in 2007. So it's only 10 years old and has a capacity of 4,600. Uh, team, the club value, I think, is... It's somewhere around here. Club value, if I remember right, was about 45000 And if we look here, they have basic training facilities and basic youth facilities. Finances, as we mentioned, are kind of okay. It's semi-professional, of course. Media prediction is 22nd, so that's pretty, pretty low. And here is the estimated value, 45,000 pounds. So a lot of things going on. However, there's a couple of very important things to look at. One is how cool are the uniforms? And I like the blue ones, these blue and white striped uniforms over here. Those are kind of nice. Uh, the yellow ones here and the mustard colored ones, I'm not really all that excited about those. Uh, and then, of course, very important is the logo. And that's kind of where I'm struggling a little bit because if we take a look at this logo, it's, it kind of looks like they gave Sally, 12-year-old Sally, the clip art program, and she kind of threw something together in the night and just said, here we go, because it's got like all these different colors and like what are these black dots over here? And then this thing, what is this yellow? Is that like a Pokemon or something like that with like Christmas lights on it? And what's he standing beside? Is this like a tree, but all the branches are broken off? So it's like, what, why is this thing even here? All the different colors. So I kind of look at that and I kind of give the crest, a, unfortunately, a D minus. That could be a big factor in this decision. But that's uh, Nuneaton Bar. Let's take a look at our next offer. Our next offer has come in from East Thurrock. So the offer in from East Thurrock was uh, fairly similar in terms of money from Nuneaton. Exactly similar, actually. 800 pounds per week. And they have a 3.5K wage budget, of which they're currently using 1,000 pounds. So we would have about 2,500 pounds of wages left to work with per week. Uh, their expectation is similar to none eaten. It says fight bravely against relegation. And their, their media prediction here is 22nd. And the value of their team is 14.84K. And this is in the Venerama National League South. So about the value of a used used car. Their facilities here are a little bit less. The training facilities are basic and the youth facilities are poor. Um, if we take a look at their stadium here, the stadium is Rookery Hill. Uh, condition is poor, which actually for July is kind of a bad sign because in my experience, the stadiums get kind of beat up. The grass gets really beat up over the year. So if your grass is poor in July, in January, February, you're just going to be asking for trouble. Uh, capacity is a little bit less at 3,500, uh, and it, it apparently was never built because there's no date there. So we don't really know when it's built. Um, if we take a look at our uniforms, pretty spiffy home uniforms. I like that kind of solid blue. It's simple. I mean, it's functional. The away uniforms, I'm not not all that keen on it. And they're both dark. So that is some somewhat of a factor there. The crest, certainly better than Nuneaton Borough. Uh, we've got this warrior or peasant here with a, a scythe, and she's killed some of those black rocks or something like that on the ground and did a good job with that. So black and yellow, the color's better. I don't know what this little bar is here. 
but I give this a C. That's a pretty decent logo there. And of course, they're semi-professional, founded in 1969. So a lot of good things to kind of like about this one. Um, that's our second offer. Let's take a look at our third team to offer us a job, which is Aston United. Aston United uh, training facilities and youth facilities are poor. Uh, they're similar. I think they offered a little bit less. It was 750 pounds per week in terms of salary. Uh, they have a 7.5k per month uh, per week wage budget, no transfer funds. The expectation is higher here, though. Here we don't just have to fight bravely against relegation; we have to avoid relegation. So that's somewhat of a factor. Of their seven and a half thousand in wages, they're currently using 5.53, which is right here in the difference. We have about 2,000 pounds a week to work with, which is just not bad. And that seven's a pretty good number. I mean, not as high as none eaten, uh, and certainly higher than. Uh, uh, East Thurk, but you know, seven, that's a, that's a pretty decent wage, I think, at this rate. Their prediction here is 17th, so higher, so the expectations are there. Estimated value, again, about as much as a used car. Uh, the stadium here uh, looks a little bit uh, kind of beat up. Again, we don't know the year built, and the condition is poor. 4,250, this is Hurst Cross. Uh, so not as good as Nuneatonboro. If we take a look at the uniforms, uniforms aren't bad, huh? Blue, right, simple stripes and things like that. And the purple there, the red and purple, looking pretty good. And the all-important crest up here, uh, it's kind of busy, but I love the Latin inside here. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's labor vincit omnia. Work conquers all, which is pretty awesome. I mean, the crest is kind of busy too. This little nose ring and a bird and a star and then a dragon up top. But I like the colors in it. It looks kind of cool. I give that one a B, I think, in terms of a crest. That's pretty much everything. Those are our three job offers. So the big decision, and it's kind of like having a baby here, because if things go well, we're going to stick with this club for maybe 100 hours or more of playing it. So this one decision has huge impact for the whole year. Um, you know, And so a lot of stuff going on. If we look at the squads here, we can see there's a number of players in here, but I can't really see the individual ratings of the players. So it's not all that pretty help, helpful to kind of look through them in terms of just seeing how many are here. But Ashton United has a number of players. If we look at that, if we kind of take a quick peek at East Thurrock and we look at their senior squad list, uh, they only have one player. Oh, my goodness. Wow, they only have one player on wages. I'm not sure how they figured out. Oh, it was 1,000. Yeah, so it must be just some players. And so a lot of work. All of these players here must be on uh, non-contract agreement so a little bit of a precarious situation not much money to work with and a lot of players on non-contract contracts but uh, so that's something to consider there and then lastly uh, Nuneatonboro I think had a, a rather large squad if we look at that um, oh not too bad uh, with six players on rather large wages wow those are expensive for down here how about at the U23 level? Yep, that's pretty much it. So uh, all of these teams would need players, and we're going to have to act fast because right now the date is July 11th, and I think the games start for this league on August 1st. So we only have about two, three weeks to get these players in and get these teams going. So it is decision time. Uh, if you have thoughts as to which one of these three, Nuneatonboro, East Thurrock, or Ashton United, we should pick, uh, drop them in the comments and things like that. What's going to happen now, I'll go through and I'll, I'll take a break here. I'll come back. I'll take a look if there's any comments. I've got these up on a couple of uh, bulletin boards as well. So I'll take a look and see if people have ideas there. Then I'm going to make a decision, uh, pick a team. We'll come into the next episode, which will be season one, episode zero. We'll kind of take a look at the team, what we need to do with it. Then our season one, episode one, will be our first time where we play a match. So if you're, the background stuff here isn't all that interesting for you, jump ahead and go up to season one, episode one. We'll jump right in at the beginning of the season and we'll play our first match. And uh, that brings us then. Thanks so much for coming by. If you enjoyed this, please consider giving it a like. Uh, give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe or hit the notifications and things like that. This should be a long save. Uh, we should be able to continue. I'm hoping it's going to continue for at least a number of months, putting up about five episodes a week, Monday through Friday, about 3 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time and about 9, p. Uh, 9 a.m. Uh, Central Standard Time here in the U.S. And so uh, hopefully be pretty consistent with putting stuff up and getting this moving, playing about two Two seasons per month, kind of at a nice, modest pace. But uh, that's that's about it. Uh, thanks again, and have a great day. We'll see you in the next episode with our team selected. Which one will it be?